GM Liquid Media asks, if line of sight is lost, can a temp waypoint be set for where the player was last seen and have the AI go to where the player was? Yeah, that's a good idea. Definitely. I think you could just use, no, you'd have to set a new position variable when you lose line of sight. But yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, you could definitely make these guys smarter, right? They're not the smartest tools in the shed. Djorg asks, what should I do if I want to implement different personality AI, but having the same states? As you can see here, I made unique states for each sort of personality type, right? We have our chaser type and they have their own set of states. And then we have our scanner type and they have their own set of states. Now you could actually mix between them and have them going from chasing to scanning behavior, but I would say it would get it could get complicated quickly. So I like having a separate group of chaser states and scanner states, but it's up to you. How you want to combine them is really up to you. They, they can be mixed and matched. Luis Mota uh, asks, is it easy, or Luis Emota, I don't know. Is it easy enough to use the Node UI from the animator in editor scripts? Uh, no. You have to write your own node display. I would actually like to do that. That could be a cool extension of this to add like a graphical UI to it. It's something I would like to look into. So I'll let you know, but I don't think you can use the animator UI. You have to write a node editor UI and editor scripting, which is possible. Many people have done it. Uh, Falcon 15 asks, can different transitions decisions be given different priorities? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, you could obviously get more and more and more complex with this. I tried to keep it as simple as possible, but you could add all kinds of stuff to your state controller or to the states themselves. Uh, you could randomize some of the decision-making or have like a, yeah, assign a priority to each state or a priority to each decision or all kinds of stuff. I mean, uh, there's many ways you could do it. I just needed to teach this in an hour and I took two hours <laughs> So that was kind of as much stuff as I felt that I could get in there. Uh, rames 44 uh says, the thing that was missing in the talk about them was the distinction between writing the code for the SOs and creating and linking together instances of them. Yeah, I agree. I ran into that. Well, the, the thing that I think trips people up is people are so used to working with mono behaviors that when you get into scriptable objects and instantiate them as assets, then... People kind of want to use them the way they use mono behaviors. And obviously it doesn't really work that way, right? You end up like you're writing data into an asset, um, even though they're not designed to be like persistent data structures between like they're going to get reset. So it, it can be confusing for people. So hopefully this, the, the key kind of like rule of thumb, I think, is you never want to set fields on a scriptable object usually you never want to set variable values. Uh, instead, you want to either pass in a function and get a get some data returned or just read data from them. GM Liquid Media says, I've been working with 5.6 beta on Linux systems. I put in a bug report and the Unity development team were able to fix it and it's now part of the new update. Right on. Yeah, guys, do, you know, <laughs> we have a lot of users who complain about bugs in Unity, but don't file bug reports, right? If you file bug reports, they go into our system and we really take them seriously. You know, uh, if you just say, oh, the editor crashed and I'm mad and I hate it, uh, that doesn't really help us to make the product better, right? So uh, filing bug reports is one of the good things you can do as a member of the community to uh, make Unity a better platform. Um, and we do log, you know, all the bug reports go into our internal system and sit there until somebody does something with them. It doesn't get ignored. Uh, and actually in the past like two years, we've gotten like much more organized and serious about bug tracking and, and fixing them. And the, uh, I mean, I think you can see the release quality has gone up quite a lot since like, you know, between 5.1 and 5.6. So that is a, a great way to commute to um, contribute to the community. If you, you know, you have time. Frank Tinsley says, good to also isolate reproducing the bug as much as you can and give them a little project that only contains the code to reproduce. Yeah, that is really helpful if you can do that. Uh, definitely. A clean, small reproduction case is really nice. 
Shoker Zero says, can confirm, submitted a bug report, and got an answer in like an hour. Amazing. That's awesome. Pifflick uh, asks, is it bad practice to have much behavior logic inside scriptable objects? No. Uh, you see, that's pretty much what we've done in this lesson. Uh, all our behavior and logic, except for the stuff in, in our state controller, is in scriptable objects. As you can see, I made a lot of different classes because I really like the idea of I just have this one object asset that does one thing like chase or attack, right? I could have made a chase and attack um, asset if I wanted to, but I like the idea of having them separate so that theoretically I could make maybe if I wanted to make an AI that chases you and then explodes when it get, gets close, right? I could do that. Um, so I have chase as a separate action or I could make a... Uh, AI that just sits in place and attacks and shoots like a turret. Um, I like having them all as like separate little pieces um, that I can kind of mix and match and, you know, build Legos out of. Um, but you could make bigger, bigger classes with more stuff in them. I don't think that would be bad practice. Just don't put a bunch of variables on them that you're setting from the scene, right? That's the, that's the main idea. Yeah, I agree with Frank Tinsley. I'm kind of making the case that it's, it's a good practice here. I mean, you know, it's it's a workflow thing, right? It's really, you could just take all of the logic that I just wrote and write it all in one big, huge C-sharp class, and that would be, maybe would be fine, you know? Uh, but I think this is nice workflow-wise, right? Because then if I want to add another state or I want to add another action or decision, I can just make it discreetly and just plug stuff in and it doesn't break any of my other stuff or even interact with it which I think is kind of cool. All right, guys, I'm going to start to wrap up. Um, take a couple more questions. And uh, yeah, thanks again for coming out. Hopefully you found the content useful. Uh, I had fun doing this one. Uh, the the, uh, the AI subject is, is a very interesting one for me. It's something I really enjoy working on. So hopefully this is something that kind of opens that door for the for for all of you a little bit to get some ideas about your own you know, AI implementations for your own games. Um, having fun AI in your game, I feel like just makes it so much more, so much more interesting. Yeah. GM liquid media says, I like to keep things in different places, just pulling the parts that are needed. I agree. I would rather have a huge pile of tiny little classes and I know exactly what each one does, especially for debugging. To me, that is just way nicer. Uh, and just easier to keep track of big, huge source files. I just don't like it, but you know, maybe it's really a, a style thing, I guess, style and taste. I've heard that the AI in Zelda is good. Yeah, that is inspirational. I've been playing horizon zero dawn, uh, and a huge part of the fun in that game is the AI fighting with the machines and they're looking around and doing stuff. Um, and they've done a really nice job of having the AI communicate what it's thinking. I kind of mentioned it during the session, but I'm really uh, enjoying that a lot. Um, I don't actually really, I don't generally like a lot of those big open worldy craft fest kind of games, but um, Horizon is really good. And I'm looking forward to Zelda. I just haven't bought a Switch yet, but I probably will because it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, I agree that Richard's talk is terrific. I mean, Literally, this two-hour training was just taking one topic from Richard's talk and blowing it up into a full lesson. There's a bunch of other little quick ideas that he just throws off in there that are really um, smart and interesting. He's just a really smart um, guy who knows Unity really well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I definitely recommend you check, check out that talk. He's done like a bunch of different versions of it, but the LA one is like the newest, greatest one. Uh, Tora Chan asks, are you planning on showing other popular approaches to in-game AI like decision trees? I would like to. I would like to. I have to look. I have never actually written a decision tree myself. I've used... I've used them before, used kind of systems that other people have written. Actually, if you want a really fun way to play with uh, decision trees, I really recommend GFX 47's Gladia Bots game. That's actually made with Unity. 
but you're authoring AI for, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, actually, you're, you're authoring AI for robots that fight in an arena using a graphical AI editor in the game, which is based on um, behavior trees. Uh, it's so fun and it's so cool. It's got multiplayer. It's just great. It's I really recommend it. I think it's like ten bucks or twenty bucks. Uh, it's really really cool. Really inspiring and and fun. Yeah, Gladiobots. Hold on, I'll I'll send the link. Big plug for Gladiobots. It's so great. Here we go on itch. It's on Android too. Actually, I played it on desktop. On itch.io. So good. Okay, guys, um, I got to run. Thanks so much for coming out. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, big welcome to all the new folks joining us for the first time. Thanks for checking out the stream. Always great to see all the regulars. Thanks to everybody answering questions in the chat while I'm teaching. I appreciate that a lot. Um, and yeah, lots of fun. And I will see you all next time. Bye.